Hello everyone and welcome to AlgoTrading.pro. In this video, um, we are going to uh, talk a little more about machine learning. Uh, it was the suggestion of one of our viewers um, that I, would, I should make more videos on machine learning topics. And I thought, well, why don't we start with the beginning? Uh, the simplest machine learning algorithms have been around since the 50s. Machine learning is not a new field. Uh, performance, real performance in machine learning is rather new, but the math behind machine learning has been around for a fairly long time. And uh, the most basic machine learning algorithm that exists uh, and it was formulated by McCulloch and Pitts a, a long time ago, right? Is something we call the perceptron. So this is uh, the first and most basic model of an artificial neuron. Um, and uh, it is the basis of everything we do this day, these days in, uh, in neural networks. Deep or not so deep. <laughs> but everything that we do in, in um, the field of neural networks is based on this concept of a perceptron what exactly is a perceptron and why would i want one <laughs> so, well believe it or not zoro knows what perceptrons are and zoro comes actually with a strategy that uses perceptrons uh, to predict market direction it's a very simple idea guys a very simple idea i found you a a pretty picture online um so perceptron right what the hell is perceptron? So it's basically a, a, a algebraic, um, a mathematical uh, mechanism to take a bunch of inputs and produce an output, right? Now, this output can be a continuous variable, like a number that can be 3.5, 3.6, 3.8, whatever, or it can be categorical, this output. So it can be, you know, will the market go up or will the market go down? These two problems are distinct. The first one is something we call regression. The second one is something we call classification. But the perceptron in this very simple form uh, can perform both. So uh, this is the picture. Uh, I will not go into details. And today we will not talk about <clears throat> the step function here. Uh, but I want you to get an intuition on how this works. So, what is the problem at hand? And I asked my daughter, who is 13 years old and pretty skilled in, in math, to help me out uh, exemplify and give you an intuition about this. So here it is. Uh, we have a bunch of numbers, right? Uh, these numbers can be anything um, that has some predictive power about the future, let's say. In this case here, we can say, well, this is a time series, right? And these are the prices. The price of today is this guy, the price of yesterday is this guy, the price of uh, two days ago, and so on and so forth. So this is the price four days ago, three days ago, two days ago, one day ago, the price of today. And we call these independent variables uh, because they are the predictors. It's not necessarily that they don't depend on each other. They may, uh, as this is a time series that we, we you know, we're just saying that this is, these are stock prices. But uh, we are trying to predict the closing price of tomorrow, right? And this is what we call in machine learning the dependent variable. I think they call it the same in statistics. Uh, so we have these variables that we believe have some predicting power predictive power um and and we have this uh dependent variable called y right which is the the prediction the the close price tomorrow right so i presented my daughter with the following problem given these four numbers these these four numbers right uh how do you how would you go about calculating this guy here <laughs> <laughs> now my daughter who is very smart looked at this and says but that is very simple this is counting by one right so you you look at this you, you figure out that it's counting by one so that you just go here and you add one and then you get <laughs> the closing price tomorrow by the way my daughter knows a lot about the stock market so 
And I said, well, honey, okay, but y you know stuff about the stock market and you al already know that the stock market does not count by one, <laughs> right? She knows what the trend is. She knows that prices are going up for a while, but it's never by one, right? So this method of, you know, counting by one, obviously it's not a good predictive method for calculating the close tomorrow. So the second, the second shot, um, that she gave this problem was okay uh why don't we add up these numbers and calculate the average right well she's thinking simple moving averages right so we can calculate the simple moving average here and that value can be our prediction for tomorrow right so this is 3, 6, 10, 15, right? So the uh, sum of these numbers is 15 and divided by 4, right? So 16 divide, uh, divided by, by 4, right, is 4. Well, 4 is not 6. <laughs> so so th this doesn't, doesn't work e either. So it is a method of predicting the price, if you will, but the error is significant, right? So... The closing price of six means that the market goes up tomorrow and my method here her method actually predicts that the stock price will go down so this doesn't seem to be a good solution either so but then when but then she she came up with something even smarter she said well but what if we divide six six by 15 <laughs> right um oh jesus so if we divide six by 15 okay um oh it keeps keeps making this a date oh sorry about that so this is a number okay well she said well if you divide six by 15 you're gonna get 0 0.4 right so why don't we do the following thing Take this value, 0 0.4, right? Put it down here for all these numbers, right? And then multiply, you know, the price four days ago by 0 0.4, right? So equals A2 times A4. All right. Uh, A2, no, uh, A3 times a4 sorry about that okay and then we do the same thing and we get these values here right and then we sum them up uh, a5 to e5 ah now we got the good prediction right now we got the good prediction so my daughter clever as she is just reinvented the perceptron <laughs> she didn't know it uh at the time but now she does uh so pretty much this was the grand idea that that mcculloch and pitts had a, a number of years ago many many years ago um it's exactly this right it's exactly this. So you have the input variables, right? We have the you have the input variables, and you you have some weights, some weights that you use. Uh, you take the input value, you multiply that value with the weight, and so on and so forth, and then you sum them up, right? And then you get your prediction, if you will, right? Now, my daughter uh, did this this trick uh, sort of in her head. Uh, but then I asked her, I said, what, what do you think, you know, is, is there a systematic way to accomplish this? You know, a, a machine, a computer um, uh, uh, doesn't, doesn't look at these problems the way we humans do, right? So is, is there a way to automatically somehow generate uh, uh, these weights? Because <laughs> right? we have the input values, we have the output value, right? So what we need to do is to calculate these weights. And, uh, and my daughter did it um, in a very, uh, you know, um, empirical and intuitive way. And she came up with this value, 0 0.4. Well, what McCulloch and Pitts uh, have on my daughter is that, <laughs> that they figured that, well, you know, uh, we can calculate this out automatically. And these things, these values, these weights uh, do not necessarily need to be equal, right? 
so and and they have to be different in many many situations because the market doesn't count by one so if i had here you know 3.5 instead of three right then i'm off by something here right so so the, the, this this set of of the identical 0.4s right weights uh this doesn't work anymore right uh so uh so how do you how do you train a perceptron how do you train a perceptron right so we are a computer now we're a machine we're no longer my daughter so how do you go about calculating these weights how do we do that uh well let's start at zero right let's start at zero so let's make all these values zero well multiply anything by zero you get zero so is zero a good starting value no because uh it's it's uh always gonna give you zero so what can we do here well and this is what modern neural networks do as well they they do something called the seeding so you set a seed here which is a very small random value right uh 0 0.01 let's say right very small value picked at random right this one here let's make it 0 0.02 this one here make it 0 0.01 again this one is 0 0.06 for example and this one 0 0.02 okay so i just picked these values at random i want you to understand what training a machine learning model a neural network in this case a perceptron right neural networks are just collections of perceptrons so what does it, does it mean to train them well you start you, you want to find the weights you have to you want to find the, the appropriate numbers here so you start with very small random values and then you increment or decrement these values so let's say we replace so right now the values are these absolutely at random and the prediction is this obviously we're too low uh we want to get here a six and here we are getting 0 0.42 well obviously we need to increase these values here does this make sense if i multiply 0 0.1 with 0 0.01 i'm getting 0 0.01 but if i'm multiplying it with 0 0.3 right i'm gonna get a larger number here which increases the output right the prediction now it's 0 0.71 right now let's change this to something random 0 0.5 right uh, now i'm up to 167 so concluding we need to go higher with these numbers here we need to go higher so i'm looking at the output and i'm trying to figure out how to adjust these weights in order to improve the output to minimize the error well you just learned back propagation right so we are propagating back the information that we have obtained from here right the output basically the error of the output and we are propagating that back in our heads of course not in excel but that is the pretty much the back propagation algorithm right so adjusting these weights in the direction that is informed by the error that we're getting here so do this a million times right <laughs> so can this be solved exactly for complex problems yes uh, th this is pretty much what we call in mathematics a diophantine equation so basically it admits an infinity of solutions you can find uh, pretty much an infinite number of combinations of these weights that will give you exactly six here uh, and eventually um, uh, there is no perfect answer if you will in this very simple example but let me show you just just for the fun of it so for example if we do 0 0.07 here uh, 0 0.15 so let's say we, we played with these numbers uh, and we adjusted them you know a hundred times and whatnot and uh, and now we get to this combination right um, and 0 0.4 what do we get 6.02 right so we are pretty close right um, so if we uh, 
want to do uh this is the example that my daughter figured out it's actually her uh, her result 0 0.3 um one one <laughs> one point two and two point five uh, I'm sorry, it was the other way around. I, I filled them in wrongly. <laughs> I apologize for that. So it's um, rather 2.5, um, 1.2, uh, 1. Oops, my keyboard is running amok here. Sorry about that. Um, 1 and 0 0.3. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter you get the gist of it okay so i am absolutely sure that you you understand um, how this works i'm gonna go back to the example that uh we where we were very close um to the um actual six uh which is the prediction that we want for this simple example all right so as you can see uh <clears throat> um uh the prediction is pretty close right and i'm sure that if you play with these numbers a little bit you can go to exactly six but again the solution is not unique um um so th these are the weights that we are after i'm gonna uh color them you know uh, let's make them blue so these are the weights this is basically your model right this is the model that predicts the future these things are the past this is the future and the connection between the past and the future is made by these weights and we, if we go back to the perceptron picture right this this is what what clarifies it right so you have the input values you have the weights you multiply these arrows here these arrows here are a bit misleading this arrow this arrow this arrow th these mean m multiplication right here and these arrows here mean that you take all these results and sum them up right and then you get an output so this is a very very uh simple uh, uh thing and in classical statistics this is called linear regression okay so if you want to find more about this stuff you, you can you know from a statistical perspective you can google linear regression um if you want to learn more about perceptrons you can google perceptrons but in essence what you've just just seen here is how a perceptron works and this is how neural networks in general work um, so you've just seen that the training um, uh, how do we find these weights simply by starting by with some with some random values and then increasing or decreasing them adjusting them as needed to get as close as possible to um, to the uh, real output value right now of course there is more to this uh, this is the training part uh, we also need to test and we need to test on unseen data but that may be the purpose of an other video uh, the purpose of this video was just to uh, help you understand you know uh, uh, the the most basic machine learning model that we use uh, in neural networks and that is the perceptron now do you think we can trade this? <laughs> so do you think we can take some values from the past? These are, let's say, prices, but they can be anything you want, right? They can be moving averages, RSI values, or volatility, or whatever. Do you think we can tr take, you know, a few values from the past, whatever those values are, and predict, if not, if not the price of tomorrow, at least the direction of the market? Well, we can try that in Zorro Trader and you will be surprised. So this example was about linear regression, right? Linear regression. Okay, linear. Now, when you want to predict classes, right? So the market goes up or down, um, or you want to tell apart cut cats from dogs and, and whatnot, then the dependent variable is no longer um, a continuous value it becomes a category like market goes up up or market goes down right uh, market goes up or market goes down the problem is that computers don't really understand things like this they the neural networks perceptrons you know they need numbers so basically instead of predicting a you know six 
when we do this uh, market direction um, prediction exercise, we need to represent these values as numbers, and the two numbers are one and minus one. <laughs> okay, so I want my system to predict a one if the, the market goes up tomorrow and minus one if the, the market goes down. All right, so this is something we call logistic regression. Okay, so this isn't linear regression anymore. Uh, it's logistic regression. We are trying to predict classes instead of numbers. And my two classes here are represented as numbers, one and minus one, but basically one would mean when the market goes up, minus one when the market goes down. I leave it to you <laughs> at home to try to find manually the values that work. <laughs> okay, so in this case, the number was six. Six was greater than five, meaning the market goes up, right? We're going to give it the one. If it were different, I would have used minus one. And you can play in Excel uh, and try to see if you can find some, some weights here that, that will give you these, these two classes. Okay. So uh, this is this is uh, the basic intuition between uh, uh, about uh, uh, perceptrons. This is how they work, and and uh, this is how you can train them. Um, and now let's fire up Zoro Trader, and uh, I'll show you what I mean um, when uh, I'm, I'm telling you that that Zoro already comes equipped with perceptrons. Uh, you've seen in my previous video on deep neural networks um, that you can call R from Zoro Trader. And we used in that video uh, a, a deep neural network model trained in R um, in order to make predictions and trade in Zoro Trader. When it comes to the simple, the simplest model, um, which is the perceptron, we do not need R. We do not need R. So after firing up Zorro, you 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 can you know uh, browse this uh, list of strategies, and you have this uh, strategy called Perceptron, which came with Zorro Trader. And let's hit edit and see what exactly is in this file. So again, there are no calls to Zorro. Everything is self-contained uh, into R into into Zorro, and no, no calls to Z to R from Zorro Trader. I'm sorry. So this is an uh, this is uh, everything is here happens in Zorro Trader. So I, I won't go through this code line by line, but you know, it's start date and date. We know this bar period is one day, uh, one four four zero minutes, and so on and so forth. It is a um, uh, a test. The testing here happens into a walk forward optimization um, uh, system, which is which is great. Um, uh, you can you can watch the uh, neural networks at DeepNet video to under or or my first video to understand more about walk forward optimization. But anyway, what I'm gonna focus here is the perceptron itself. The perceptron itself, um, and you know it's a very simple model and. Uh, the, the, the thing that makes the difference uh, many, many times with simple models like these, uh, deep, net, deep neural networks are less susceptible to this, but with simple models, models like the perceptron or a, a very simple neural network, the thing that makes the whole difference is the data that you feed into the system, into the, the network, right? Or, or the model, right? So the data makes all the difference. And there is something in, in machine learning called feature engineering, which is like, what exactly? So finding the best things to feed into the network in order to get the best predictions. So in our simple example here, right? In our simple example, these were prices, right? So price over the last five days, uh, price tomorrow, right? Well, something as simple as this is, is kind of unlikely to, to work too well. So, and of course the guys who made Zorro Trader know this and uh, they, they provided here a, a, a more realistic example. It's still a very simple example, but it's rather realistic, right? So, you know, everybody, uh, when, when it comes to stock market, everybody looks at two things. And we did the same, Kind of thing with the neural the deep neural networks video so everybody looks at basically two major things the one thing is the price action what is the price doing right and the volatility of the market right so the general market conditions is, is the market very volatile not so volatile right and what's the price doing so and the creators of this script uh have uh, uh have you know their choice was to use as a volatility indicator, the average true range, 
okay and as price action information they are using something called rate of change uh, which I, I think it's the first derivative to the curve uh, uh, for several uh, intervals of time so how much how much did the price change uh, from one day ago three days ago and ten days ago okay so this is an, an indicator that pertains price action right the rate of change you, you can google it and learn more about it and this is uh, ATR which is an indicator of volatility now what in the world is this scaling thing well this function scale in Zorro Trader uh, pretty much forces uh, the values generated by this expression into the min minus 100 to 100 interval okay so ATR the ATR can can take uh, you know uh, big big values um, and those values may be so big that they dwarf the uh, rate of change values and that generates an imbalanced model so the the output of this model would be dominated by the ATR things so we don't want that we want these values to to exert a similar um, uh, influence if you will on the model so they scaled this ATR ATR 10 days ago um, minus minus ATR 50 days ago rate of change compared to one day ago three days ago and ten days ago okay so these these all are stored into a an array called signals right um, 10 values um, so this is what we feed into the network right uh, the object that goes practically into the network is this guy here so uh, this is the input this is um, this is this <laughs> okay now what's this <laughs> well we look here and we see two things objective object uh, objective or object i think long and short so basically what they are training here is two perceptrons based on the same data they are training two perceptrons one perceptron will be trained for when the market goes up and the other perceptron will be trained for when the market goes down and they did that because simple models as these rarely work well if you ask the same model to predict both directions it, this, this model is too simple for that it's a perceptron it's very simple so they chose to use two separate perceptrons and they use the same data um, the same in input data but one perceptron will predict that the market goes up and the other perceptron will predict that the market goes down remember the one minus one thing okay so how do they do that well this is a bit of c trickery so they look at the uh price five days ago price today if it's higher so that so they're, they're not looking they're looking at the price differences and they want them to be greater than a certain value right so if the, the market goes up only by a little tiny bit they don't consider that like really going up they want to see some 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 significant uh going up right so so if that's the case right then the value is one meaning that um the market went up uh if not then it's minus one right and the same here for the perceptron trade for short predictions right same thing one versus minus one and then this these are the um these are the trading the trading um this is the trading logic right so so basically we are calling the advice long and advice short uh function of zorro trader uh we tell zorro that we want a perceptron as the machine learning uh, mechanism we want it to be balanced um google that uh, or look in the zorro trader manual essentially what this means is that adjust for situations where you have more way more long trades than short trades right so we want a balanced a balance some sort of a balance between the ones and the minus ones right so we don't want an imbalanced uh, data set so there, there are ways to correct for that but it's beyond the scope of this this video anyway it happens automatically uh it's done by zorro trader zorro trader is amazing it does so much for you behind the scenes and then we feed into the perceptron the signals meaning the predictors and the the uh the 
uh, uh, the classes, the predicted values, right? Minus ones and the ones market goes up, market goes down. And the function also needs the number of, of, of values, which is uh, here, uh, 10. Um, that's the length of the uh, array. Anyway, so, and 10 is, uh, n is set to zero here, but then it it's being inc incremented, right? Every time when this iterates. So, um, so it's not, it's not zero is this pretty much the size of the array. Uh, okay. And then basically what, what the trading logic logic here is, if the perceptron that predicts that the market will go long, uh, tells us that the market will go long. And at the same time, the predictor that perceptron that predicts that the market will go short is saying that the market will not go short so basically if the two perceptrons are in agreement one says the market will go up and the other one says the market will not go down right if these two are in agreement we go long else if the predictor that says the perceptron that says that predicts that the market will go uh down predicts that the market will go down. And at the same time, the other perceptron predicts the one that's supposed to tell me that the market goes up. If that guy says that the market will go down, so again, the two perceptrons are in agreement, then I enter a short position. So short, not long, if you will, long, <laughs> not short. <laughs> so if the two perceptrons are in agreement, uh, then, then we go long or short respectively. And you will, we will discuss it in another video. This is practically an ensemble model. So there are two perceptrons. The, these, these models can be very, very powerful. So they can be individually very simple. But when you have more of them, like we have here, there are basically two perceptrons, right? The results can be incredibly good, okay? So look, we are feeding into the perceptron uh, information about volatility. We are feeding into the perceptrons uh, information about price, right? Then we tell the perceptrons, did the market go up? Did the market go down? You know, over our training set, right? And then we will have, of course, a, 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 a test set uh, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is the data split between the training sets and test sets. So we train on the training set, we test on the test set. And what do we get? what do we get well let's take a look so here is all for you oh by the way this trades the euro usd pair selecting something else from this list will not help uh because this is hard coded into the into the uh script so here it's is the expression that tells zoro what to trade and again uh choosing from here will not work if you want to change that to Aussie USD pair Australian dollar you, you have to do that manually right okay so uh, you you can't choose from the menu uh, I, I just wanted to make sure you get that because many many users uh, try to do this and then they get the same thing and why it doesn't well that's why it doesn't work you have to uh, you to, to hard code your asset uh, at least for the script to work all right so um, what's happening here so we are again um now let's let's so uh, look I'm, I'm i'm using the spy here it's not going to be the spy so uh so i'm going to train the network the, i mean the i'm sorry the perceptrons okay and it's a walk forward analysis so we're taking a piece of the past predict the future take a piece of the past predict the future Woo! look at that beautiful curve first please notice that it's the euro usd pair right so look at this right this doesn't look bad at all guys this doesn't look bad at all okay and if we look at the uh the profit uh you know the annual is, is 72 percent sharp ratio is a little lower than i would like it to be but you know it's 0 0.91 it's not it's not the worst system right now remember my video on neural networks and how I popped your balloon at the end when I told you that, oh, this looks great, but only if you disregard market friction, trading costs, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's see, is that the case here? So uh, the first thing I want to see is the percent winning trades. Uh, 
So basically 56.9% of our trades were winners. So obviously we're doing better than chance, right? So somehow clearly these perceptrons have learned something about the market. So they have an edge of 6.9% over a coin flip, right? So it's it's not bad, guys. I mean, you you will almost never see values here like 90% or, I mean, not machine learning. 56.9 uh, is, is not great, but it's not terrible either, right? And the average trade profit is $1.62, which isn't, isn't great, but it isn't so bad either. The line that, the lines that I care about are, you know, the slippage, is it there? Yes, it's not zero, like in the neural network networks video, right? And then, <clears throat> I'm sorry, <clears throat> um, we have transaction costs, we have spread, we have slippage, right? So this is um, uh, a, a simulation that includes a more sort of realistic kind of um, situation. Um, and then again, uh, the annual return 72%, um, profit factor 1.64, that's respectable. Um, sharp ratio, this, is, this isn't great, but you know, it may be improvable, um, and so on and so forth. So for such a simple system like the Perceptron, right, for such a simple system, uh, this is surprisingly, uh, surprisingly good, right? So th th this is all it is, right? <laughs> right? So it's one neuron predicting if the market will go up and another neuron that will predict if the market will go down. And uh, this is, th these are the predictions, by the way, here, go long and go short. So when this is up, right, and this is down, we enter a trade, right? And then we exit the trade um, when things reverse, but both in agreement. This is the key. So th I think this was very clever that both predictors need to be in agreement. Uh, and, and you can see that indeed, um, uh, we, we are right more than we are wrong. And um, also that it appears that uh, the, the winning trades, as you can see, the winning trades, uh, it, it stays in the winning trades uh, <clears throat> more than it stays in the losing trades. <clears throat> so Obviously, um, the, the perceptrons uh, have learned something about the market and uh, the performance isn't terrible either. Uh, uh, am I advising you to trade this? No. <laughs> I am advising you to learn and I also advise you to play with the script, okay? So there are things you can we, you, you can change here. So not the bar period because the prices you, you have are probably closing prices uh daily closing prices and you know but you, you can play for example with the start date and the end date and try to figure out if uh this works the same um for different periods of time right this is this came with the script i, I didn't touch the script I, I didn't do anything to it right so it's, it came with zorro this is how it is uh but there are things these things that you can you can you can play with right uh you can change the the walk forward analysis period the data split you know uh, all kinds of uh, kinds of things you can play with the atr values right is 10 or 50 uh, the, are these the best values or uh, the uh, um, rate of change uh, interval intervals formation periods as they call them in uh, technical analysis right um, are these the best values now of course you know that zorro has optimization functions for all these things so I, I think this script can be greatly extended and made made to perform much better of course don't overfit <laughs> another conversation for another video but uh but i think for such a very simple this script pretty much does what i showed you here <laughs> take some values and predicts a minus one uh, and the other perceptron predicts a one if, if that's the case right so for such a simple system I think this is this is this is a, a uh, uh, pretty interesting result. All right, um, if you liked this video, um, please give me a like. Uh, this is a work of love, guys. I'm not making any money out of it. <laughs> so give me a like, subscribe to um, to our channel, and also please uh, visit our our website um, algotrading.pro uh, and sign up. It's free free like in free beer costs nothing just your email address which will not sell um and and the password that's all you need and, and inside the members area you have more videos uh you also have um uh this is this is our website here uh 
Um, so it's again, it's it's free. It's free to to sign up. Uh, doesn't it doesn't even ask you for a credit card or anything. Uh, also, you can go on 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 Facebook and like us and on YouTube and subscribe and and like and thank you very much and uh, happy trading.